Welcome to the Snow Bear Hydraulic Plow Assembly video. This video will walk you through the step-by-step -step process of assembling your new Snow Bear Hydraulic Snow Plow System. To begin, gather the following tools you will need to complete the process. A hammer, ratcheting wrench, one and one eighth inch open-ended wrench, one and one eighth inch socket, a three quarter inch open-ended wrench, three quarter inch socket, 9 16 inch open-ended wrench, a 5 30 seconds inch Allen key wrench, and two 1 and 1 16 open-ended wrenches. Remove all components from the box, ensuring all parts are accounted for. Carefully set the plow components on the floor or in a designated workspace. Step 1. Slide the two-pin vehicle mount onto the 5XM5 cross member previously installed and secure with two hitch clips. Step 2. Next, slide lower pivot bracket into main beam bracket, slide 3 inch bushing through both components and secure with 3 quarter inch hardware. Step 3. Secure a bolt on blade mounts to main beam bracket with 3 8 inch hardware. Step 4. Secure the rack arm plate to two pin vehicle mount using the half inch hardware. Step 5. Secure the rack assembly to the rack arm plate using half-inch hardware. Step 6. With subassembly step number 5 mounted to your vehicle, determine which A frame mounting hole will put the A frame closest to 9 inches to 10 inches from ground level. Step 7. Locate the A frame in the hole chosen in step number 6 and secure the rack arm plate to the two pin vehicle mount and rack assembly with the half inch hardware. Note if you have purchased a caster kit with your plow, please refer to assembly step number 25 in your plow manual. Caster stands should be put on prior to attaching the A-frame.
Step 8. Secure subassembly from step number 3 to subassembly from step number 7 together using 3 quarter inch hardware and bushing supply. Step 9. Secure the rear beam bump stop to rear pivot bar using the quarter inch flathead hardware. Step 10. With the rear bump stop facing downwards, insert the rear pivot bar assembly into the A-frame and assemble with 3 quarter inch hardware and bushing supply. Step 11. Insert the hydraulic cylinders with hose fittings facing vertically and near the rear pivot bar. Secure the rear of the cylinder by inserting item number 28 from the bottom of the A-frame upward through the rear pivot beam. Secure with R-clip. Secure the front of the cylinder by inserting item number 29 from the top through the main beam and cylinder, then securing with R-clip item number 30 on the underside of the main beam. Step 12. Secure a hydraulic power pack to rack assembly using 3 8 inch hardware. Step 13. Install power pack cover using quarter inch wing screws. Step 14. Insert lifting arm into position, securing with 5 8 inch hardware. Insert the lifting cylinder with 90 degree fitting facing towards the passenger side of the vehicle and near the power pack cover. Secure with 5 8 inch hardware. Secure top of cylinder to lifting arm using 5 8 inch hardware. Step 15. Push up on the lifting bar until the hydraulic cylinder is at full stroke. Attach D shackle to one end of the chain and to the A-frame. With the cylinder extended, lift up on the A-frame until it will not move any further and extend the chain up. Secure with a 3 8 inch hex bolt through lifting arm. Step 16. Hydraulic hoses to be plumbed as shown, the two longer hoses to be plumbed to angling cylinders, and the shorter hose to be plumbed with the 90 degree hose fitting on the vertical cylinder, and the straight fitting at the pump. Hand tighten fittings and then tighten an additional half turn with a 9 16 inch open ended wrench. Step 17. Push down on the lifting arm until the vertical hydraulic cylinder is fully retracted. Remove filler cap and fill the fluid reservoir with cold weather hydraulic fluid to below the filler cap. Step 18. Plug electrical harness into vehicle harness installed previously. See the snow plow electrical wiring guide section of your plow manual. Step 19. Loosely assemble driver's side and passenger side blades together using half inch hardware. Ensure second hole from bottom is left open. Step 20. Attach long and short scraper bar with 3 8 inch carriage bolt hardware. Step 21. Attach blade support to underside of bottom angle iron using 3 8 inch hardware. Do not tighten until mounted to the A-frame. Attach skid shoe brackets to blade using the half to 13 by 1 hex bolts, two per bracket. Spin plain 3 quarter inch hex nut over the threaded portion of the skid shoe until it reaches the bottom of the threads. 
Slide remaining threads of skid shoe in the skid shoe bracket and loosely secure to bracket using the 3 quarter inch nylock hex nut. Step 22. Attach blade in three places using clevis pins secured with R clips and washers provided. Once blade has been secured to lower A frame, tighten all loose hardware on the blade. If hardware has been pre tightened before mounting the blade to the plow frame, it may be difficult to align the blade with the three clevis pins. Step 23. Push the blade back against the A-frame until it hard stops on the blade stops. Secure spring to blade and main beam with eye bolts from the spring kit. Tighten the bolt on the underside of the main beam bracket until light can be seen through the coils of the spring. Step 24. Attach rubber deflector, deflector bars, and plow markers using 3 8 inch hex bolts and lock nuts. Step 25. Finally, before disconnecting plow from vehicle, remove locking pin and lower caster stands. Resecure with locking pin in lowest position. Also, before disconnecting plow from vehicle, raise blade. Remove clevis pin R clip from caster wheel and pivot caster downwards. Reconnect clevis pin arc clip and lower the plow blade. Fluid control valve adjustment. Upon testing your snow plow, if you realize that the plow will lift up but not lower or lowers very slowly, chances are that the fluid control valve on the front of the hydraulic power pack, slightly to the right of the lifting cylinder hose connection, needs to be adjusted. Loosen the hex nut holding the Allen key adjustment in place and turn the Allen key adjustment shaft counterclockwise one complete turn. Retighten the hex nut to lock the adjustment in place and test your plow's lowering function. If there's no movement, loosen the hex nut by one half turn. Further adjustment may be required if the desired function has not been met. Skid shoe adjustment. To adjust your skid shoes, mount the snow plow to your vehicle and lower the blade. The scraper bar on the front of the blade should not actually touch the ground. Raise the plow about a quarter inch to half inch above the ground and adjust the three quarter inch nuts on the skid shoe until they touch the ground. Retighten the hardware to secure in place. Hydraulic system bleeding. Your hydraulic plow is equipped with a self bleeding vent cap on the fluid reservoir. When your plow is attached to the vehicle, toggle the wireless remote on and operate the plow up, down, left, right about 10 times to work out any air in the hydraulic system. If you feel there's a cushion type effect when angling or lifting the blade, it is possible there is residual air in the hydraulic system. You can reduce this effect by loosening the hydraulic cylinder hose fitting and allowing the air to bleed out until there's a constant stream of hydraulic fluid. Repeat this procedure at each hydraulic cylinder fitting. Your Snowbear Hydraulic Snowplow is now ready for use.